before we go on to the next question, I have another point that I want to make with respect to uh, parents who are in Miss Holt's situation. In other words, you have a perfectly capable yet very unmotivated adult child with Asperger's still living at home. Now, we certainly want parents to be advocates for their child with Asperger's or high-functioning autism. We as therapists, we preach that, we teach that. We want you to go to school and lobby for your child. We want you to participate in the IEP process and, and be the best advocate that you can. We want you to teach your child how to be his own self-advocate and all that. But too many of us as parents... Out of the notion that our Asperger's child is not quite capable, we have gone way past advocacy to enabling and overprotection. Many parents of adult Asperger's children have moved from caring for their child to caretaking. And many of these parents are held hostage by their own emotions of anger, frustration, disappointment, guilt, fear, etc. And they frequently wonder what will happen if they do throw their adult child out of the nest without a net. So, it's good that you advocate for your child, but it's also good to make the distinction between advocacy and over-nurturing. Now, we as parents sometimes become overprotective and over-nurturing out of a loving, caring heart. Our intentions are of the best. Maybe we feel like our child is vulnerable, naive, or otherwise incapable of doing certain things. And so we want to protect him, of course. But the unfortunate side effect of overprotectiveness is the child feels a false sense of security and confidence. It's a lot like a child who has weak muscles due to the fact that the parent always does the lifting for him. Then one day the parent noticing that the child has weak muscles, suggests to the child that he go to the gym and work out and start developing some muscles. But the child sees no need to do this since he has the parent to do the lifting for him. The same is true with dealing with life's challenges. As long as your Asperger's son has you to deal with life for him, there's no need for him to develop any emotional muscles or social skills. So I use this analogy to say this. Your first course of action is to begin the process of backing out of the equation. In other words, stop assisting so much because your over-assistance is literally stunting your child's emotional growth. Now, we're not saying don't assist at all. You are going to have to help out here. But I'm simply saying instead of doing things for your child, start doing things with your child with the goal of eventually getting to the point where you'd back totally out of the situation and let him take control entirely.